Hello and welcome to Lesson 6.5, Resolution of Vectors into Rectangular Components. So we're going to talk about the horizontal and vertical components of any vector. Now this would only work if you can actually take a vector and put it in terms of its horizontal and vertical components. So to find this angle theta right here, you have to know the magnitude of y and you have to know the magnitude of x. So realize that tan theta is equal to the magnitude of y over the magnitude of x. Or if you wish to find theta, you're doing the tan inverse of the magnitude of y over the magnitude of x. Now the magnitude of x and the magnitude of y is actually in terms of both that angle theta and the magnitude of v. So realize, based on basic trigonometry, cosine theta is equal to the magnitude of x over the magnitude of v. And therefore, if you cross multiply the magnitude of v with the cosine theta, then you'll get the magnitude of x is equal to the magnitude of v times cosine theta. So if you know what v is, its size, and you know the angle, you can figure out what the magnitude of x is. Likewise, sine theta is equal to the magnitude of y over the magnitude of v, and therefore again, rearranging, magnitude of y is equal to the magnitude of v times sine theta. So we're going to use these two properties right here. To figure out our uh, horizontal and vertical components. And then we're going to use this one right here to determine um, angles. So let's move on. So Jake is towing his friend on a toboggan using a rope, which makes an angle of 25 degrees with the ground. If Jake is pulling with a new, uh, force of 70 newtons, what horizontal force is he exerting on the toboggan? So let's draw a little toboggan right here with his friend on the toboggan. Jake is standing in front of the toboggan, pulling with 70 newtons of force. And it's at an angle of 25 degrees to the horizontal. So what we're doing is we're looking for this vector, which we'll call x, and we'll just look at the magnitude of that. So remember using the previous process, the magnitude of x is equal to 70 times cosine of 25 degrees. If we use our calculator and we'll work that out, we get about 63.4 newtons. And just based on the direction, you can actually see which way it's going. So therefore, horizontal force is about 63.4 newtons. And in this case, if you wanted to, you could say to the right, if you knew it was being pulled to the right. Okay, let's take a look at another problem. So a crate is being held steady on a platform that is inclined at 5 degrees. Determine the forces holding the crate in place parallel and perpendicular to the platform. 
Okay, this time I'm going to use a ruler to help me out with this. We're going to draw a crate. Yeah. So let's say this is a crate. This crate is 20 kilograms. That means the force that this crate is giving, I'll put this right at this corner, right here, and I'll draw it further, so don't worry about that, is 9.8 times the value 20, which is 196 newtons. Remember, we use 9.8 newtons for every one kilogram. Please realize that this angle right here is 5 degrees. It's an exaggerated 5 degrees, but we'll say it's 5 degrees. So, what we want to do is we want to find parallel forces, keeping this in place. So this parallel force, keeping this in place, and again, this is being held steady, so we have to have the vectors adding to equal to zero. And that means the parallel force probably used to be something like this. You'll notice the parallel and perpendicular forces turn out to be 90 degrees to the angle. Some of the things we might notice. If this bottom angle is 5 degrees, that means this angle right up here is 85 degrees. Which means, due to that pattern, this angle down here is also 85 degrees. So I'm going to need to find out this X and this Y. Okay, so I'll find out the magnitude of X. I'm taking 196 times cosine of 85 degrees, which is about 17.1 newtons, and to find out why, that's 160 newtons times sine of 85 degrees. Which is approximately 195.3 newtons. So therefore, parallel force is 17.1 newtons, and the perpendicular force is 195.3. And there we go. That's how we work that out. Now, you might be asking, how do we work out problems that we did before? Like uh, when we're dealing with multiple headings or multiple uh, multiple vectors. Like these ones are just one vector each. So what if we did this kind of problem? A boat on a heading of south, 35 degrees east, going at a speed of 20 kilometers per hour, encounters a current on a heading of south, 71 degrees west, at a speed of 3 kilometers per hour. Use rectangular components to determine the resultant and its direction. So what you have to do is you have to split this up into two different vectors, and you're going to keep them separate from each other. I'm going to work with a uh, south 35 degrees east vector first. Meaning this angle up here is 55 degrees if you want. And you're going to list it in terms of its horizontal component. 
this vertical component. These two vectors have to add up to be the equal to the resultant vector, which was heading at a speed of 20. Now, because of where you know these are headed, you can actually work out the actual directions here. So our blue vector, I'm going to call x. Our red vector, I'm going to call y. The vector x is actually 20 cosine of 55 degrees, but that's headed in the east direction. So that is approximately 11.5 kilometers per hour headed east. You can do the same thing for y. This is headed in the south direction. So that is one horizontal and vertical component for one of the vectors. So let's draw our other vector. Our other vector is headed south, 71 degrees west. Somewhere over here. And again, we've got to find its horizontal and vertical components. I'm going to call this vector A, and I'm going to call this vector B. So using similar properties, we find out vector A. Oh, this one was 3. Okay, so. 3 cosine of 19 degrees, and this one's headed west. This one's headed south as well. approximately one value headed south. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use these values. We're going to actually find out which way it's headed. So notice that the x and the a are parallel to each other. So what we can do is we can add those two vectors together. So we're going to take vector x and we're going to add vector a. They're headed in opposite directions, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to head them in the same direction in order to calculate this. So let's say we're taking, uh, going towards the east. So we're going to say uh, x is 11.5 kilometers per hour east, and we're adding negative 2.8 kilometers per hour east. Okay, so we used our calculator there. We got about 8.7 kilometers per hour east. Actually, I rounded closer to 8.6 using the exact values. 
by the same process, we're going to take vectors uh, y and b, add them together. They're both headed in the south direction, so we have 16.4 kilometers per hour south, and we're adding 1.0 kilometers per hour south. That adds to 17.4 kilometers per hour south. Using the exact values again, that turns out to be about 17.4. So what this means is, you have a vector overall traveling 8.6 kilometers per hour east. and 17.4 kilometers per hour south. The two vectors together make up this. So, what you can do is you can find out your resultant's magnitude and direction, just using tangent and Pythagorean theorem. So to find out r, taking your approximate values of 8.6 and your approximate values of 17.4, squaring those values to get that value of R at approximately 19.4 kilometers per hour. And the direction Turns out to be the tan inverse of, well, you probably want to use 17.36, which is your opposite, oh, sorry, 17.4, over 8.6, which turns out to be brought about 64 degrees. So, we have a conclusion there. Therefore, the boat is traveling nineteen four kilometers per hour in a direction of east sixty four degrees south. Now what you can see is this last example deals with a lot more calculations and a lot more rearranging and substituting and solving. And that's the one downside of using horizontal and vertical components to answer these kinds of questions. They just take a long time to do. And that's why using sine law or cosine law might be a better option. The only other advantage that you can see here is you're using a tangent to find out your angle. That means you do not get an ambiguous case. And because you don't get an ambiguous case, this might actually be preferable to work with. But again, I think more time consuming. And thus concludes this lesson.